Hey folks, Scott Kelby here from KelbyOne.com and I've got a tutorial for you on making black and white conversions. So here's an image. This was taken at the, uh, I believe, at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. At least I think that's where I took it. <laughs> It, it's probably there. Anyway, so uh, it is obviously a full color image and I want to talk to you real quickly about some things you can do with black and white that I think are kind of cool. Uh, we are using Lightroom Classic and so we're going to go over here right to the right of the word profile and you'll see these four, four little rectangles. That brings up the profile browser and if you look down here there's a thing called BMW. So the BMW, black and white, obviously is 17 different thumbnails that you can hover over and choose a black and white conversion starting place that you would like. So just move your cursor over them and look, it gives you the, ooh, that's a pretty nice one, gives you the different looks and you can find one that you like. Now my image is kind of dark, which is was intentional. Ooh, I kind of like that one right there. Let's go with that. That's BMW 09. So that will be our starting place. But here's one of the first things that I want to show you that I think is quite important is once you've chosen a thumbnail, of course, you could hit close, but I want to bring your attention right here to this slider. There's an amount slider here. All right. And so you can get a less intense effect or a more intense effect. In this case, it's almost working like a contrast slider here, but you can kind of vary your effect and get it where you like it. Then I hit close. And then the last things that I normally do to a black and white photo, and these are going to seem really simplistic, but it is what they are, <laughs> is that uh, I'm going to add some clarity, which will you can see affects the mid-tone contrast. In this case, I want to bring out texture, so I'm going to use the new texture slider and en enhance that a bit. And then uh, you can set the white point and black point by holding the shift key and double click on the word whites, double click on the word blacks, didn't do much for the blacks, did it? And then just move up the contrast a little bit. And as my finishing move, I would go down here to the effects panel, go to the post crop vignetting, and we're just going to move it such a subtle amount that you really won't know I added a vignette, but it actually does make a difference. So I'm going to go here and go to my, my magic number is minus 11. See if I can hit 11 instead of 12, 10. 11 right there and that seems pretty subtle but watch I'm going to toggle this one off and you can see see how it just kind of takes the edge off that edges but you don't look at it and go oh you added a big vignette because it is of course very very subtle but if you just toggle it on and off and there you can see how we're at now let's look at it before and after I'm going to press the letter Y and you can see a before and after but the problem is I'm seeing a before and after converting it with a a color picture well that's not really helpful. This is why I want to do this. Let's go over here to the side. Let's go to the history panel and let's go to import. That's when it was color. And there's when I first applied the black and white. If you right click on this, so these are all the things that I've done to it, right? You can kind of go back in history. If you were to click right here and go uh, right click, you can say copy the this history step. That was when I first went from color to black and white to the before state. So when I do that, now you're seeing just adding the profile and then now you're seeing the finishing version over here. So let's make it a little bigger so maybe you can help see that a little better. So on the left is what the photo looked like when I first converted it to black and white because of what I just did in the history panel. And on the right is the finished version. And I, I actually would do one last final step at this point. If I like the way it looks, then I would go and add some sharpening in the detail panel. So let's just finish it off with that. Go over here to detail and let's crank up the sharpening a bit. It was started as a JPEG image. This did not start as a raw. So I'd already had worked on it. Uh, I'm going to crank up the sharpening a little bit and somewhere in the 60, 70 range. Ooh, that's looking nice and crisp. Now, if it looks a little too crunchy, that's fine if I'm going to print. But for just screen use, that's maybe getting a little high. There's 63, and I think we're, we're pretty good there. All right. Now, we have whole classes on converting to black and white over at kelby1.com if you want to jump over there and check them out. By the way, you can get a free level of membership. You can go sign up right now and get a free level. Go to kelby1.com, choose the free plan. It's not going to ask for a credit card or anything like that. You can get in there. You can get the latest issue of Lightroom Magazine, which is a magazine that we create each month for or 10 times a year for our members. 
And uh, you can also watch some cool classes like Learn Lightroom CC in one hour if you want to pick up CC and a bunch of other classes. And it's just all free, free, free. So head over to kelby1.com, take the free class. Don't take the free class. Sign up for the free membership, then take some free classes, download the magazine. It's all good. All right, everybody. Thanks very much. And we'll catch you next time right here over on LightroomKillerTips.com.